Today, we're going to give ourselves a faith boost by getting to know God by his name, I Am. Hi, my name is Pastor Chris Sakai, and you are watching Faith Walk. And have you ever asked the question, who is God? And today we're going to get to know God by the name that he identified himself in the book of Exodus as I am. Now I'm going to be reading from my Dake study Bible here in Exodus chapter three, uh, beginning in verse 14. And we're going to read how God gave himself this name. I am. Now, God gives himself many names, and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about some of the other names. But when God names himself, it's not like we would name our kids, you know, Bob or George or Fred you know, or Billy or, or whatever. You know, when God gives himself a name, it has a meaning. It is describing his character. It is describing his identity. It's describing his very existence, uh, who he is. And these are characteristics that are unchanging. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so as we read about God's names, uh, it will boost our faith because we can be assured of who God is. You know, the opposite of faith is, is doubt. You know, we say, you know, faith, not fear, but in reality, the opposite of faith is doubt. And when God wants us to operate in our lives by faith. See, when we pray, God is not moved by our needs. He's not moved by our pain. He's not moved by our pleas. These aren't the way to approach God in prayer and expect results. Too often, you know, we've all done it where we have this need and we pray and we're begging God to, to do this thing. And we're like, why didn't God hear me? It's not that God doesn't hear us. It's that the way that God, the thing that God responds to is faith. And so as we learn to operate in faith, as we learn to pray by faith, as we learn to live by faith, then we will see uh, things begin to shift uh, in our lives. And we actually really realize the authority that God has already given us to, to operate in. And so as we learn his names, it should boost up our faith level where we can say, Lord, okay, I'm going to trust you in this particular area. So today we're going to be talking about the name I am. And Moses, you know, we all know the story where he first got presented with God. It was the, it was God revealed himself in the burning bush and was telling him to go and uh, he was going to go and deliver the children of Israel from, from slavery in Egypt. And he said to him, he said, and God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, uh, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And so what he's saying here is Moses is like, okay, who should I say sent me? And God says, tell them I am that I am. Now that's kind of a, a funny name, you know, who sent you? I am that I am. What does that mean? You know, for us in our English language, you know, I am is, you know, it's kind of a verb, you know, I am hot, I am cold, you know, it's describing a sense of existence and this will be true for God, but it's actually going to go further than a state of existence. It's actually going to go into a state of being. So we're going to read uh, Dake's notes here from my Dake's study Bible, and we're going to kind of break that down a little bit. But then I also want to kind of share with you a little bit of a, a Hebraic perspective on what this word um, means. And so he says here, I am that who or what I am, or I am the self-existent one. So he's a self-existent one, meaning that he wasn't created by anything or, or by anyone. He's self-existent. He doesn't need anything or anyone else to exist. Whereas we need God to exist, you know, uh, God doesn't need us. You know, he is, everything he does is to, to bless us. And so he doesn't need us. He is, he is self-existent. He exists all by himself and doesn't need anyone. He says he is the eternal. So he always has been. He always will be. Uh, the one who has always been and always will be. This is shortened to I am here. The ever-present and living one. So he is always present, ever present. He's alive. He's living. And it's equivalent to Jehovah, the eternal. And so this, 
description here uh, by Dakes gives it, it, it talks a lot about uh, who God is, you know, in, in, in his existence. And if that's all that this was, that would be enough, you know, that God is self-sufficient. I mean, that's to, to know God as creator should fill me with faith in that, I mean, I can trust that God because he doesn't need anything else. He's already created the whole universe. He spoke everything into existence. Everything exists because of him. I can trust him with my life. You know, that right there uh, should be enough that he always has been, always will be. He's eternal. I can have faith that now I'm going to be eternal with him because of the blood of Jesus and that I've made him the Lord of my life. Um, but this also goes beyond that because in, in Hebrew thought, uh, this word I am goes beyond just existence, but it also goes into a state of active being. And so this here is not just talking about when God says that I am that I am. He's not just talking about who he is. It's a state of active being. Uh, it says, but to be active, to, to express oneself as an active being. Uh, in the name Yahweh, God has, has made himself known as a present being, present with and for his people. And wherever God's presence is invoked, that announcement is pregnant with the certainty of his attention, his care, his power, and his grace. And perhaps a helpful uh, paraphrase of God's word at the burning bush would be to say, the peop to the people of Israel, I am present, has sent me to you. And, and I love that. So here in this commentary, uh, um, it says that he is present. So the God who is, I am present, who is always present, is coming to you, has sent me. And so we can, when, when God is revealed as the all-present one, the one who is there with us now, I mean, he is here yesterday, and he is the God of the future but more importantly, he's God right now, and he's God right now with us in our situation right now. And so when we have that reality, that revelation that God is the, the I am, the, the I am present one, then it should, it should speak to that in every situation in our life, in every prayer, we have his attention. We have his care. We have his power. We have his grace. And so when we pray, sometimes we, we talk to God and we say, oh, dear God, please do this for me. But we should start utilizing the names of God in our prayers to increase our faith. When we address God as I am that I am, that he is the self-sufficient one. He is the self-existent one. He is actively being there for us. He is... I am present. I am here with you right now. And when you recognize me, you know, I will activate my attention, my care, my power, and my grace in your particular situation. God was telling Moses to tell the children of Israel, I have been there with you through your struggles. I have sustained you through your struggles in Egypt. And now I'm going to actively get involved with my power and my grace and set you free. And so when we go to God in prayer and when we know him as I am and we address him as I am, we can have that confident that this all powerful being that exists all by himself, but who is also personal and is actively present in my life will meet my every need. I can, I can pray with assurance knowing that he hears me. And so I want to encourage you today to, to catch that revelation that God is always present in your life. And if you are a born again believer, you know, we know this at another level as well, because the Bible says the Holy Spirit has been placed inside of us as a seal, as a deposit of our salvation. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our teacher. He is always present inside of us. And when we know God as the I am present God, when we are always aware that he is there, it will ch change our life. If you struggle with sin, if you struggle with addiction, 
If you walk in the revelation and the reality that God is always present, that he is always there, it's going to, it's going to help you overcome sin. Because let me tell you what, you're not going to go and do some type of sin when you have the awareness that God is there with you. Not that he's off somewhere and he'll, he'll see it sometime. But if, but if you have that revelation that God is right here with you right now, he is always present, it will change your behavior. It will change your thought life. It'll change your focus. It'll give you a boldness that you've never had before. It'll make you fearless. It'll help you to walk in authority and power. And so I would encourage you, my friends, to, to, to catch that revelation that God is the, he is the great I am. Yes, he is all existent. He is all, he's self-sufficient, self-existent, but he's also the I am present God who is always there. And if you're watching today and you're like, man, this is fresh to me. I don't know Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if I would go to heaven. I want you to click, click on the link in the description and learn how you can be part of the family of God today. And everyone else, I want to encourage you to, to for the rest of this week, every time you go to prayer and make sure it's you know daily, multiple times a day, begin to address God as I am present and allow that reality to seep into your mind and your heart and you'll begin to see how your life will be changed and transformed. Hey, love you guys. We'll be back with you next time.